So he went and got the tape, listened to it, and he called me and was like, hey, I'm doing Down South Hustlers. You know, y'all want to get down? I was like, yeah. And so that's how I started. Like, I was living with my dad at the time because when he called, he called and he asked for Courtney. I didn't recognize the voice. So I was like, he ain't here. He wasn't one of my homeboys, you know. And so then he said, well, tell him P call. I was like, no, 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 it's me. I was like, no, 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 that's me. I'm here. And he was like, nigga, you dodging somebody or something? <laughs> on boss talk one-on-one that's what it was too man like even w during my hustle days i was never really a born to lose ass nigga like i always still kind of had i knew it was something more for me yeah i didn't know exactly what but i did have the dream of music and see i signed with p i got with no limit in 95 yeah so i graduated high school in 94 whoa mm, you that know was what i mean you were, what, 18? Wait yeah a minute. i was 18 five what song what rap what what was p uh what was he no doing? that was right that was i signed with p right when 99 ways to die came out in tru the first true record yeah. and right before ice cream man that ice but cream but i want to know what too. what did he see in you why he wanted to sign you. Initially, what it was, I sent him a tape, you know, okay. and uh, I sent him a bunch of tapes. Actually, this is when he was still in the Bay Area. You know what I mean? I was rapping with my partner, Cisco. Uh, we had a group called CCG. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we just didn't want to be local no more. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I sent the tape and I was just persistent. You know, I called his voicemail. Back then he had a voicemail. I would fill that bitch up. So nobody else could leave voicemails. <laughs> Dope, Every day man. I made it my business to just call back to back to back to back to back. And finally, I got on his nerves, and he figured if I was calling like that, then I meant what I was saying. So he went and got the tape, listened to it, and he called me and was like, hey, I'm doing Down South Hustlers. You know, y'all want to get down? I was like, yeah. And so that's how I started. Like, I was living with my dad at the time, because when he called, he called and he asked for Courtney. I didn't recognize the voice. So I was like, he ain't here. He wasn't one of my homeboys, you know. And so then he said, well, tell him P call. I was like, no, 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 it's me. I was like, no, 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 that's me. I'm here. And he was like, nigga, you dodging somebody or something? And I was like, nah, I was like my dad named Courtney. And so it went from there. So, okay. Yeah. You, and, and so that was his initial intention was to get you on down south right, hustlers. Right. Now it was two of those, but right. It was two different ones. It was, it was a double disc, double disc. Yep. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Double disc. Okay. And you was on that thing. And that was your first time meeting Pete. That was my first time. Uh, being in a real recording studio. studio. That was my first time being to the Bay Area. That was my first time being on a national record. Okay. That was my first time on a, for a lot of shit. Well, well, who was in there when you recorded? Was, because cause I talk, I, I, I called, I'm going to tell you what I did. I mm -hmm. called my boy, shout out KLC. I called him. Yeah. I said, Last night I yeah. said, KLC. Shout out to KLC. I said, this nigga Court coming, man. Tell yeah. me about it. He said, man, he's a good dude, man. Yeah. I said, he said, yeah, I'm coming up there. He probably, he said they're doing something in Boja City. Yeah, he coming yeah up we got here. that uh, Saturday. Yeah, he I'm told, going from here to there. Yeah, he told yeah. me, he said he coming up here. Uh, yeah. He going to come see me Sunday. Ain't that what he told us? Mm -hmm. So yes. you better come. And if he don't, I said, nigga, I'm coming to yeah. that Baton Rouge. So let here. me tell you about KLC. So when when P flew us out to Oakland, uh, he had an apartment for, where everybody stayed in Hayward. Okay. And it was when I met Beats by the Pound. I met KLC, Moby Dick. Um, it was Mia, Servon, all of them were in an apartment. Hey. And um, <clears throat> KLC used to be so hard on me. We end up going out there to do the Down South Hustlers. We did the song R.I.P. So yeah. a lot of people are just putting together 20 some years ago that that's me I'm on the inside of the cover, on the CCG cover. Yeah. But um, So we end up recording the album out there as well. It was the first time we got to meet K. Lou, you yeah, know, yeah, and we got yeah. beats from Al Eaton. These are the folks that was doing shit for too short. You know, so yeah, we, yeah. we thought we made it. Yes, you know sir. What I mean? Yes, sir. And uh, Aunt Banks and all of them. Yeah, man, this nigga KLC used to, like, like I, I felt like he used to make me stay after class. Like, you know what I'm saying? He would just stand. I would be in there doing my verse, and he would stand in the window and just look at me. Do it again, bro. <laughs> Do it again, bro. And he would just stare at me while I'd be reading. And I'd be, like, reading my shit. Like, look, like. Why the nigga stand at me like that? <laughs> man, KLC was so hard on me back then. Did yeah. you appreciate it now? I did, of course. Yeah, yeah, he it, was trying to make me better. He was trying to pull, you know, the best out of me. Yeah, wow. for sure. I like it, man. Yeah. You know, I heard so, we told so many stories when he was on here, man. Yeah. I, I, I done started to repost now because I didn't have no no subscribers hardly. Yeah. I was like, now. Nah. at that time. I was like, man, I'm going to put this boy back up. So yeah. I'm going to start back going through it. Plus, he got to come back. But anyway, yeah. yeah. we talk all the time. But mm -hmm. it's just the fact of how people, you know, when you get to California, you in there, you do the, the down south. What was what sticks out in those in that time period? Just mm -hmm. the, not 
other than KLC, what sticks out being in the studio for the first time around people you really didn't know? <clears throat> um, the, I'll be honest with you, man. It was just the whole experience. I mean, you have to think, you know, we're kids. I'm, I think I just turned 18. You know, we had never been to the Bay Area. Um, you know, P was like in No Limit. You know, we didn't know the difference between a, a no limit and a and a and a major. You know, yeah. we, we thought we arrived. You know, <laughs> now there was a little bit of uh, internal um, uh, confusion. Just I would say with me and my not not me and my my partner, but you know, uh, the manager we had at the time, he he didn't really know what he was doing, but he knew more than us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He was older than us. And and it kind of it was a, a strange little um, dichotomy because, you know, me and P had such a we had developed and cultivated a close relationship. Yeah. My partner and P, they hadn't met. They hadn't talked until we actually got out to California. Okay. They was meeting for the first time. So imagine me and P are talking for months before yeah, we yeah. go out there. You the leader. So, so by the time we get there, you it's might like not me and even, P know each other. You might not even be the leader, but in his eyes, you are the leader. For sure, for sure. I was the spokesperson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was just the vibe. Me and P are kind of cut from the same cloth. Yeah. You know, that's why we've been friends for so long. Yeah. But him and my partner, they really didn't mesh. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.